Everything Edge. Greetings, beloved. I'm Dr. Mark Sharona, and this is On the Living Edge, and I'm delighted that you've decided to get out on the edge with Jesus and with me for these next few moments. As always, I want to say a deep and hearty thank you to all of our Living Edge partners. You really are the difference that makes the difference for the sharing of the gospel to well over 175 nations and growing. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm amazed at the response we're getting from this brand new series, The Beginning of the Harvest, The Breaking of the Dawn. And as we are in this post-resurrection, ascension, Pentecost season of the church calendar, and we come into a fresh awareness of a major outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the midst of a major shaking globally, you and I are being poised for multiple breakthroughs in the body of Christ. Open your heart Open your mind, mix the word with faith, because in your life, this is the beginning of a fresh harvest and the breaking of a brand new day because of the goodness of God in your spirit. Genesis 32, verse 24, And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Everybody say, the breaking of the day. Say, Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him. That doesn't make sense. Say, Jacob was left alone. A man wrestled with him. That doesn't make sense. Jacob was left alone. A man wrestled with him. That doesn't make sense. It's an apparent contradiction, and it's on purpose in the Hebrew. When you study this in the Hebrew language, there is a play on words here, and it's important to understand that in the contradiction, you and I are Jacob. I'm going to locate you in this story and take you all the way to the cross, because today, the dawn is going to break. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. How many of you ever felt like you're out of joint? How many of you want to put other people out of joint? Well, Jacob was put out of joint, and, the man, and he said to, them, to, to Jacob, let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said to him, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel for saying, I have seen God face to face and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose up upon him, that is Jacob, as he passed the face of God, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. Now, let me give you some preliminary comments before we go to Genesis 31 to establish the premise on which I'm going to tell you the prequel, which is the key to the sequel, which is why the day is going to break today for you. I'm not talking about we're coming into a season. I'm talking about this is a prophetic moment. Chains are going to break from the inside out. The praise in this house has established a platform for a demonstration of the Spirit and power. I don't care what you came in with, you're about to be located in this story, and the Son of God is about to unlock a door that you are going to walk out of, and when you walk out that door, everything you see, everything you hear, and everything you say will have shifted, because from the inside out, the dawn is going to break. Somebody say thank you. Oh, I dare you to get a little more excited. When we look at Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled, and the place where they wrestled was the Jabbok River. And you need to understand in the Hebrew, Jacob 
and then Yabok for the river, which is a tributary of the Jordan. Yakub, Yabok, Vayabak. Vayabak is wrestled. So you've got Jacob, Jabok, and wrestling, all a play on words, all the same. And they all have to do with inheritance. Yakub, Yabok, Vayabak. On purpose. And when it talks about that he touched him in the socket of the thigh, it is a word play as well because they don't exactly know what happened here and this wasn't a permanent injury. This was not something Jacob limped on for the rest of his life. It was just a way to get him to let go. But it didn't let go. He didn't let go. Why? Because there was something about this enemy that became an ally. He didn't know who he was fighting with. I'm going to suggest to you that because he got a message from his family that Esau was on the way from his servants, he could have thought it was Esau. That in that moment when he hears Esau is coming, Jacob arranges a gift for Esau, sends it ahead in layers so that the gift is overwhelming because he doesn't want Esau to kill him. But behind his back is an uncle who wants to kill him too. He doesn't like him. So when he sends ahead the gift, he then divides up his family between Leah's tribes and Rachel and he sends them ahead. Now, when he comes into Laban's territory, his testimony is, when I came to you, I had nothing in my hand but a staff. And that's a Jewish way, a colloquialism of saying I was empty handed. All he had was a, a staff and I haven't got time to go into that. We talked about the staff before. Now that he's leaving and he's at the border of the Jordan River and he's at the place of wrestling where the socket of his thigh in the sinew of his hip is going to be strained. And by the word, that phrase socket of thigh, sinew of hip is a word play on the territory of Gad and Manasseh and the half tribe, the half tribe of Gad, Manasseh and Ephraim, because at the very place where he wrestles, two and a half of the tribes are going to get their inheritance. So it's a foreshadowing of inheritance at the border between exile and alienation and promise and deliverance. And I need to locate you right now because if you really are at the place of the breaking of the dawn, you're coming out of a season of exile and feeling disconnected from the promise and you are at the border where you are wrestling but you don't know who you're wrestling with because you think you're wrestling with the devil and you're rebuking but it isn't going away. And it's because the issue is not the enemy. The issue is there's a friend who's hiding in the dark and hiding his power because there's something in you that gave away your power and he doesn't want you to leave that place until you get your power back. Look at somebody say, it's time to take your power back. Tell somebody else, it's time to take your power back. This is the breaking of the dawn. Today, I'm taking my power back. Today, I take it back. Today, I won't let him go until he blesses me. You need to understand, we misunderstand prophecy, the gift of prophecy. And all too often in Pentecostal and charismatic circles, we always talk about prophecy as predictive, foretelling, 
The greater expression in the New Testament of prophecy is forthtelling. In other words, when God gives a prophetic word and a prophet or a person with the gift of prophecy speaks it forth, it's not for the future. In the release of the word, it happens now. I didn't come to preach to you. I came to bring you a now word from God. The dawn is breaking now. And in the place of your wrestling, at the border between where you have felt like you were left alone, isolated and exiled, and the promise, God is about to give you a future in the place of your dark night. I don't care if you're 9 or 99. If you're still alive, there's a day that's about to break on your behalf. And if you will say, be it unto me according to thy word, it shall be done. For with God, all things are possible. Somebody get ready. The dawn is going to break now. Therapy. I'm, I'm just warming you up. We're about to go into the therapist's office. On the one hand, he's about to face Esau. He's already had a face off with Laban. But in the middle, he's going to face God. It's all about faces. But he comes into the wrestling match with an issue of faces. Stay with me. Genesis 31, verse 2. And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him with favor as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was and said to them, I see that your father does not, does not regard me with favor as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. Now let me read it to you in the Hebrew, because that translation doesn't capture what I'm about to tell you. But Jacob saw that Laban's face changed in regard to him. And the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was and said that I see that your father's face has changed with regard to me, but the God of my father has been with me. I'm so delighted that you've chosen to hang on until this moment. Many of you are just getting introduced to me and to our ministry, and I wanted to give you a special opportunity to feed on something that will enhance your life, add value to your journey, and empower you by the Holy Spirit from the inside out. It's a package that retails for $89 with a book, a best-selling book, an entire series of messages on the book and a learning manual. And it's all based on the seven secrets of unfolding destiny. If you'll right now go to drmarkfree.com, you will get the entire package as my gift to you just for logging on to that website, drmarkfree.com. Do it now. This is a moment of deliverance. I'm not waiting for something to happen. I'm telling you something is going to shift in the preaching of this word. And God is going to back up this word with a sign and a wonder in your life today. 
And for some of you, the sign may simply be inside a light bulb goes off and says, I knew that was what God was trying to tell me. And for others, there are going to be a cluster of events that begin to show up in your life because of this moment where you're going to recognize something did happen in the proclamation of the revelation of the word of God and the preaching of the gospel. The dawn is breaking. 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 Your harvest is beginning. Now is the hour. Now faith is. The issue that preceded this moment at the border where Yabak and Yabak and Abak come together in God is a face-off with Laban. There's a work being completed in the process. Your authentic life. By the way, authentic means original. And I'm going to suggest to you that original, based on the actual word from which authentic comes, requires a perfect image that's unique. Your authentic face <laughs> is the image of God. Christ is your authentic image. You can't be authentic without him. So until you see him, you don't see you. And if all you see is you and don't see him, you are alienated. Because your promised land requires you see your promiser, who when you see him, as in water, so face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects man. You cannot see the true you until you see the true him. And until you see the true him, your face is something that you have to be in a place where you know that you've allowed other faces to intimidate you and therefore you don't know what to do with your face. Tell somebody, it's therapist's office. Your authentic face requires that you stop being constantly threatened by the face of Laban. Everybody's got a Laban. And by the way, once you meet one Laban, if you don't deal with the first Laban, you meet Laban all sorts of other places until you stop running from Laban's face and start behaving in a way that does regardless of what Laban's face looks like, you're not going to change your face. I, I, you got to hear this because the dawn is about to break. Some of you are about to take off a mask today. This is time. We're not going to play Halloween. We're going to play Elohim. Jesus said, I said, ye are gods, Elohim, judges, rulers, princes, kings, queens. This is not Halloween. This is Elohim. And we've got to take off the mask. Jeremiah. The only way you're going to prophesy for me is you got to stop being afraid of their faces. Most of us don't realize how many decisions we make based on other people's faces. And Laban has become expert at facing you down. Everybody has a Laban that intimidates the Dickens out of them. And you have to understand, the truth of Jacob's own face has to survive the necessary masks he's had to wear for 21 years in Laban's house of an alienated, isolated, I'm all alone existence. Nobody sees me for who I am. It's getting quiet. In exile, you work for somebody else.
In exile, you work for somebody else. Unlike Adam, who in paradise was to work by day and watch by night, and the working and the watching for Adam was a simplicity of promise and productivity. But those same two Hebrew words describe Jacob working for Laban by day and watching by night. And they are a profound double curse because he's got to keep an eye on Laban's face all the time because he's vulnerable to the changing faces of Laban. His own security for himself and his family depends on how Laban shows up in the morning. Look at somebody say, you are in the therapist's office. Whether you want to be there or not. Jacob is in double exile in working and watching because labor was meant to be fun. We were, Len Sweet has it right. We were never meant to work under a curse. We were meant to play. Your life purpose is supposed to be something you enjoy. You get up in the morning and everything in you says, I just love doing what I'm doing. I love it so much I would do it if I didn't get paid for it. But how many people get up every morning and dread the fact that they've got to go in and read somebody's face because they know their day will be miserable unless they adapt to the face of the person who's, who's intending to extract from them everything they can. You work for me now. You work for me now. You work for me now. I don't want my shackles polished. I want them removed. Don't treat me like a slave. I'm a real person. Don't you dare put shackles on my hands and then polish them every time I show up because I do everything you want me to do. So you polish my shackles so they look like jewelry. They're still shackles. I don't want my shackles polished. I want them removed. And there are seasons in all of our life where we have to serve Laban and we have to learn how to read people. Amen. Stress will kill you. Yes. Living to please people will take your life from you. It will take your authenticity from you. Because the more you kiss up, the more blind you become to the fact that one day when they're done with you, they're gonna write you off and they're going to find somebody else to deceive and their face is going to change toward you. The best thing that can happen is when somebody you thought was a friend reveals they're not, they're an enemy and their face changes. That's a moment for your breaking of the dawn. It's not a moment for you to feel sorry or worry. It's not a moment for you to redefine yourself as someone who hasn't got what it takes. It's time for you to say, if I can't make it alone, I can't make it at all. If I can't stand alone, I'll never stand with anybody together. I got to find out who I am apart from their face. just for my sake but for Christ's sake because he didn't make me a slave he made me his brother Amen. he didn't save me because he felt sorry for me he saved me because he loved me and gave himself for me so I could become the me he always dreamed I could be And you got to decide. You got to decide. I've studied this face of Laban has made a deep impress on the psyche, both conscious and unconscious, of Jacob. 21 years he's had to study this face. 
21 years, he's had to study this face. For some of you, for decades, you've been studying Laban's face, but it comes in different faces, male and female. And you keep saying, why is this happening to me again? And it's because there is something in you that you have yet to see because you're judging your face by their face. Which means you're afraid of their faces because there's something you're afraid to face in you. Beloved, as long as the earth remains, there is seed time and harvest. Jacob sowed seeds that led to an amazing harvest when he became the Israel of God and built a nation. As you sow seeds, God will give you a harvest. I want to invite you right now to sow a seed of love into the soil of Mark Sharona Ministries and enable us to continue to see a harvest of souls all around the world. Today, if you'll sow a love gift of $35 or more as a seed into the soil of Mark Sharona Ministries, I want to put in your hands this powerful brand new life learning resource, The Beginning of the Harvest, The Breaking of the Dawn, six messages, CD or DVD, your choice on the transformation of Jacob to Israel. Fresh insights that you may never have heard before that will change you from the inside out. Sow that love gift now. Call that number on the screen. For those of you that are moving Moved on to sow a love gift of $55 or more. I also want to send you a powerful multiple message series called The Creation of Wealth. How come I want you to have that now? Because the markets are fluctuating and we need to understand the biblical patterns for wealth creation and sustainability. And this series will give you an inside window on biblical economics. Call that number now, sow that love gift, $35, $55 or more. And for those of you that are moved on to sow a love gift of $75, you'll not only get the series on Jacob, you'll not only get the Creation of Wealth series, you'll get my book, The Obtaining of a Harvest from Your Seed of Dreams. That book, based on Mark's Gospel, Chapter 4, will revolutionize the way you look at the dream seed God put in your life and how to harvest it for a full and complete realization of what God has promised you. Call that number now. Sow that love gift, $35, $55, $75 or more, and let me put these lifelong learning resources in your hand today. Call now.